This is the modified K450 engine that's going to be static tested. It has a 12 inch blast tube, a 23 inch case bonded fuel grain, a smoke element, a 20 second delay charge, and an ejection charge. In addition to finding out why the ejection charges failed on the November 13th flights, this static test answered many of the questions raised during those flights. The erosion of the blast tube type nozzle was extremely aggressive, causing the thrust to be erratic. This explains the chuffing seen on the November 13th flights. I think this defect can be easily addressed by changing the materials the blast tube is constructed out of. Some of the digital photos from the November 13th flight showed the rocket on its ballistic path to the ground a split second before the impact and the exact location of the impact site. Using these photos, we decided to try to find the rocket debris. After searching for about 20 minutes, we found the impact site of the first rocket. This is where the rocket landed. And it's amazing because the green pipe that it was built with is just completely pulverized. There's pieces of it everywhere. Not a big piece at all. In this static test, the 12 inch PVC blast tube used in the previous test was replaced with a 12 inch steel tube. In this static test, the 12 inch steel blast tube was replaced with a 12 inch copper tube. By themselves, PVC, steel, and copper nozzles were unable to hold up to the extreme temperature and pressure inside the engine, but adding a PVC jacket to the copper nozzle, while not perfect, was a step in the right direction. I had said that a copper nozzle with a PVC jacket was a step in the right direction. Yeah, not so much. What this Blast 2 project needs is a clean sheet of paper, a sharp pencil, and a good stiff drink.